We are now going to pivot to the other area where this has gone from, hey, this is a good idea, to implementation from the government as a requirement. Uh, we don't have anyone from the FDA today, and we're sorry about that. Uh, there are some challenges about public speaking in that domain. But what I do want to do for those of you who have not been tracking this is just give a brief update. All of this is public material. Uh, there's, there's nothing new in here. Um, but the idea for SBOM has been around for uh, probably is a sector outside of modern applications uh, the, the, the longest. Uh, there was a Congressional Healthcare Industry Cybersecurity Task Force. There was a Congressional Task Force with uh, experts, many of you know them, uh, Chris Weisopel, Josh Corman, uh, were involved in this uh, that explicitly said, bill of material is really important. Uh, FDA talked about this in 2018, saying, hey, we think this is what we're going to do. Uh, and then uh, last fall in the Omnibus Act, Congress explicitly said, FDA, you have authority to regulate or to talk about cybersecurity for medical devices and explicitly saying for cyber devices, connected devices, it defi the Congress defines cyber devices, uh, there's going to be explicit, we want you to explicitly talk about SBOM. Um, so a couple of moving pieces. The... Uh, Submission requirements, which is to say, as you give uh, the FDA information about your new device, uh, you must have an SBOM if you qualify as a cyber device. The FDA has said that they recommend uh, an SBOM for non-cyber devices. Uh, and some of you have heard the term refusal to accept. It's an industry term. And basically, the FDA says, we're not going to say what we will or want, but we have the authority to, if you don't give us an SBOM, to say uh, this is not a complete submission. So we're, we're going to say it. So um, the, in October 1st is that deadline. It's, I, I'm not an expert in FDA rules. It's not a guarantee, but it's something that they say they have the authority to do. And the other thing is there's draft guidance from 2022 from the FDA uh, that includes for, for pre-market submissions. Uh, and the finalized guidance has not been published. Uh, guidance is the tool that the FDA has uh, to sort of say this. It's something that traditionally uh, very few organizations ignore what the FDI issue, FDA issues in their guidance. One other quick thing I want to flag is, uh, or two things I want to flag. Two, one is the FDA has been doing some great work on um, partnering with countries around the world, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, the International Medical Device Regulatories Forum uh, has, has been looking at this to make sure that countries around the world are all on the same page. Uh, Afton Ross has been doing some really great work on coordinating that around uh, the world. I'll talk a little bit more about the international piece in a moment, but I also do want to call out the FDA as just having incredible leadership one, for sort of seeing this as something that's really important uh, for patient safety, for the security of our world. Uh, probably you've heard about uh, the fact that ransomware has been targeting uh, healthcare providers, and, and it actually has become a matter of life and death, right? We know that when a healthcare delivery organization can't use its digital systems, uh, often best case scenario is they've got to move patients elsewhere. Uh, and, and we know that, right, if people can't get the medical care they need quickly, that actually is not just bits and bites, as Josh Corman often says, it's flesh and blood. Like that's, n none of us want that to happen to a hospital in our area. So uh, great that the FDA has stepped up. And the other thing the FDA did, did is to say, we don't want this to be a healthcare specific approach. And so I wanna thank all of the folks from the healthcare world who've come and joined our community, bringing the perspectives of the healthcare delivery organizations and the device manufacturers, uh, because I think that really has made our community a lot richer. So that's been fantastic. Uh, if you want more information about what the FDA is doing, cybermed at fda.hhs.gov. Uh, and thanks to the FDA for 
uh, letting me speak on, you know, for, for you know, I, I, I didn't do this at your request. Got to be very careful with interagency discussions. Uh, but this is something that is a key part of how we're thinking about this. And I think it's set a model for how we, what we might expect from other parts of the government. When I talk to other regulators as well as other purchasers, I always point to the FDA as how of having followed a model of partnering with industry, but also making it clear. Okay, uh, two quick things on the international side of things, or before, sorry, two quick things before we uh, invite our friends in Tokyo uh, to present. One, for those of you who are here in LA, uh, after we wrap up, we're gonna have a chance to sit around and talk about today. And if you were shy about expressing opinions, great opportunity to share, great opportunity again to make friends, to learn about vendors, learn about what companies are doing. Uh, we're gonna be having a happy hour at a place that is just around the corner. It's called The Lab. Uh, and uh, great chance to have a tea, have a beer, uh, have a snack and, and talk about things. So that'll be happening right after this. We'll, we'll all head over. On the international front, uh, this is something that is now a priority for CISA, is we wanna make sure that governments around the world are on the same page. And so over the next six to 12 months, we're gonna be partnering, we're gonna be reaching out and, and building out uh, a, a direct way of having government experts be able to share what is our experience, what is our concern. The last thing we want is to have regional SBOMs or country-specific SBOMs. We know that compliance is hard enough already, and so we're going to be working to make sure that we have the perspectives of our friends around the world. Uh, and so if you're watching this and I haven't reached out to you already, uh, please reach out to us here at CISA. We're excited to work on this, and it's something that we also want to, uh, it's going to be government specific, but we wanna make sure that we regularly reach out and provide updates to you, the broader community in industry and in open source and academia, so you can track that. Uh, and with that said, we're really excited to find, uh, to, to check in with our friends at the Ministry of Economics, Trade and Industry uh, in Japan. They've been another one of these organizations that very early on saw the value of thinking about supply chain transparency, working with their needs. Uh, before we start, I have one last note, which is we are going to pause recording uh, at the request of this organization. We'll work with our friends at METI to uh, share more um, and, uh, and, and see what we can share with you.